Yesterday I lightly covered this topic, <clears throat> um, but I also had a lot of stuff going on yesterday. I had a meeting, I had a dinner date, I had a lot of stuff going on, right? So um, I just gave like a quick commentary about how upset I am as a parent, as a grandmother, that um, this woman is not only has she victimized children through her behavior, but she is continuing to victimize um, the, these folks through her words. Not only the ukulele song, but also this Vanity Fair article are attempts to victimize her victims further. Um, so, uh, Fat Sajak covers, reads the article, and it looks like you know, of, of the people that I've seen cover it so far, it looks like she has kind of a at least shorter version of it, of reading it. Because her video is only 35 minutes and everybody else's videos have been like an hour plus. So let's, let's go over this real quick. I did it. Welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, you're here now. And yes, you are handcuffed to that chair. If you've never been here before, I'm Fat Sajak. I'll be your snarky, sarcastic bitch of a host for the day. Or this video, at least. Maybe not the whole day. I've got some shit to do. Today, we're talking about Coley Mellinger again because, of course, we are. This is the saga that won't die. If you are incredibly unaware of what's going on with Colleen Bellinger, I have posted pew 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 three videos. That's six. Three. Three videos. Uh, so far, recapping. Many people have recapped the best person thus far, in my opinion. Well, I mean, everybody's made wonderful videos. You've all done great. Um, Swoop. Yeah, Swoop has the best videos. She has the most informative, most thorough videos. And, um... A lot of um, what is out there right now, including my own videos, are our reactions to this, of how disgusting this is. And um, <laughs> I mean, it, not only was she um, abusing children, whether she wants to believe it or not, because her her attorney is trying to go with the whole thing of well. She didn't try and engage in any sexual relations with these kids. Um, that's not the only form of abuse that exists out there. Um, also, that the the video of her talking about how she killed her dog. Like, what kind of sociopath are you? Holy shit! Has made probably the most comprehensive videos thus far about the situation um with interviews and such with the victim so if you have not seen swoop's video if you don't know swoop for some ungodly reason i don't know why you wouldn't why you would be here and not know swoop I'd get your priorities swoop 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 she makes good documentaries y'all she puts a lot of time and thought into it you should also check out her um the her breakdown of what happened with Illuminati together in the most brief way I can possibly sum this up Colleen Ballinger was uh, exposed for essentially grooming uh, her fans uh, treating them like shit uh, very racist things in her past and pretty close to present, treating animals badly, uh, all sorts of shit, as well as her best friend, Corey DeSoto, uh, her brother, Trent, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's been a lot. And yesterday, <laughs> Vanity Fair put out an article. We can look at the de-evolution of the Miranda Sings empire and see that the longer it drags out, the harder it is to pin down the exact truth. Which, first of all, I the first time I saw it, I just read by headline, I quote tweeted it, and I said something to the effect of, like, 
Yeah, because like all of the physical evidence that absolutely objectively exists that we have all been shown point by point. Obviously, I can say all this. There's only so many characters. Obviously, none of that holds weight because of, you know, time or whatever. Um, what I did, you know, um, I just watched Ethan Klein of H3 H3, his coverage of this for me yesterday as well. And um, he a couple of things that he points out in his podcast is that um, or that I don't know if it was him specifically or I don't remember if it was like other people that are like there on his um, as his team was that uh, the pictures that this um, journal journalist in air quotes um, used were from like a Teen's Choice Award type thing. So already establishing she's supposed to be a child influencer. And yet we're going to cover all this subject of all of... Actually, the guy doesn't even really get into the accusations. It's a hit piece against Adam McIntyre, who was the first victim who came forward in 2020. And he was 17 at the time that he came forward. Um... The other thing Ethan Klein pointed out is that when you click on that journalist, in air quotes, profile link at the bottom of the article, it's been removed. So I don't know if that means Vanity Fair has fired him or put him on like some sort of suspension or like leave of absence or something like that. Um... But apparently his profile has been removed. But as far as we know to this point, there has been no retraction of the article. So Vanity Fair, step it up. No. And I found out like moments later by just like opening Twitter was that the article was full of half-truths, lies, misinformation, all of that, and I have still yet to read through it all. So we're going to read through it all together today, okay? We're going to go through it point by point, and we're going to yell about it, because you know what? I woke up this morning, and I thought, you know what I want to do now? Fucking yell. So here we are. I hope you're ready, and I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, that's okay, too. <laughs> Whatever. Colleen Ballinger has been a YouTube star for more than a decade, amassing tens of millions of followers, many of whom found her when they were teenagers or even younger. They fell hard for her potty comedy. Potty comedy. Right. Interesting wording. And specifically her fiction or fictional... What are you, like, trying to be, like, garbage pail kids or something? I'm fairly certain that the inventors of garbage pail kids did not create, like, private chats with their biggest fans and start trying to uh, exploit them, but okay. Alter ego, Miranda Sings, a talentless adolescent who delusionally believes she can sing despite the fact that she's always off key. The persona resonated with outcast kids who found her desperate desire for fame to be oh so accurately cringe. Yeah, because she modeled it after people in her school, according to her, uh, that thought they were gray but weren't so she was just like silently judging everyone she went to school with anyway such success earned ballinger a netflix series sold out live shows and most recently rapidly intensifying controversy well i don't think the success earned her rapidly intensifying controversy i think her disturbing behavior did but Anyway, let's go. Late last month, Rolling Stone published a story alleging that Ballinger had engaged in inappropriate behavior with underage fans. Yeah. Right. Rolling Stone, who mm -hmm. interviewed the victims of, of this. Okay. The magazine verified screenshots of texts in which Ballinger asked a minor about their virginity status and their favorite sexual position. She also asked them to send pictures of their body, specifically his ass. I'm Barbie! In case you were wondering. However inappropriate her alleged behavior was, the article clarified that no sexual crime had, be had been committed and that no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger had intended to start a sexual relationship with a child. Okay? What's your point? Uh, just so you know, 
uh, sending nudes is creating a sexual relationship with a child. Calling. There are different levels of sexual relationships, right? Nobody said that you raped anybody. Okay? That there was any statutory rape involved in this. But uh, swapping nudes with children? Totally fucking illegal. And you know it. So we're just like excusing her right off the bat? Or... Okay. Okay, let's carry on, I guess. Ballinger did not respond to Rolling Stone's multiple requests for comment. Yeah, Ballinger hasn't responded to anyone who wasn't willing to pay her, I guess. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Though steeped in the world of YouTube fandom, a chaotic, shape-shifting minefield where allegiances are fortified and swapped by the hour. Oh, wow, that's more dramatic than being in a YouTube fandom. Many of these claims were not new. Ballinger had even already responded to some of them. On YouTube, of course. Where? The ukulele. Oh, <laughs> addressing everything, that's right. Rolling Stone's piece was tame, legally sound, one could argue, compared to the language and rumors that had been flying around her for years. Yet, its publication preceded starker allegations against Ballinger getting similarly, similarly, similarly ushered into the mainstream press. A few days after the Rolling Stone piece went live, HuffPost published its own investigative report. Her fans say she groomed them as teens. In the ensuing weeks, Ballinger would be accused of everything from performing a Beyonce song in blackface, as Miranda sings, to texting a sex worker's nude photo to a minor. Okay. Okay, it's not just a sex worker. It was her friend, person that she made believe was her friend and consistently used those nude photos to send to a minor adam mcintyre and to a another fan turned employee johnny and fat shame her this was her podcast partner up until very recently who has a, like a fans only channel and she's got, you know, two different types of careers. And here she is doing a podcast with Colleen Ballinger, who is supposedly her friend, who apparently had been fat shaming her with young boys. As a joke to consistently make fun of her. Trisha Paytas. Ballinger's team has denied she performed in blackface, saying she was wearing green face paint for a prior cover of a song from Wicked. You know what's funny about this is, A, that her legal reps only want to clear up things like she didn't do blackface because there's evidence to support all the other things. Two, that... In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, you can feel free to disagree with me on this one, um... But everything else you have to agree with me with. I'm just kidding. Dancing and singing Beyonce single ladies in green face is still a little too close for comfort. Like, you have to assume that it's some... Well, yeah, you could argue the juxtaposition, but she's, you know, she's just trying to be like, no, 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 no. It was green. It's green face. It's green face. Right? Um, because she had done a wicked song right before it. I'm sure that she probably could tell that there might be some implications that the juxtaposition of the songs and the costume um, might be somewhat problematic and might be perceived a certain way. I mean, what are you trying to be like the Dave, Ch Dave Chappelle for fucking kids? What the hell even? Point during that show, the green face paint came off, right? Like it had to come off at some point. She wasn't going to wear green face the whole time. Where were the makeup wipes in between scenes? You know what I mean? Like, yep. I don't know. I'm just saying. Also that there's no other evidence of her singing single ladies on YouTube that I could find um, with the green face paint. So either like the, the order of the show changed, the details of the show changed, or this was just a one-off incident not that that matters i'm just thinking out loud anyway whatever let's okay. keep going her sings tour has been has since been canceled her career abru abruptly stalled 
When reached for comment, Ballinger's lawyer replied in an email that Vanity Fair's inquiries were simply a regurgitation of the baseless and unsubstantiated claims that other media outlets and individuals on social media have reported. You know, and for the, those hardcore fanboys, like, I forgot to turn off comments on one of my videos and some fanboys showed up on my channel to argue in her defense. And the, the thing is, y'all need to stop freaking out. She did what she did. There's receipts. Um... And now she's going to have to face the consequences of that. But if you think this is going to ruin her life, she's getting royalties on everything else. Has Netflix taken her down yet? I don't, I don't know that they have. They should. They should take her down. Her, her content is not appropriate for children. Or at the very least, they should re-rate it. So that it's like rated R at this point. Because now we have allegations uh, from several people who were children at the time that these things happened, including exposing a minor on stage in front of an audience. I mean, there's a lot of allegations out there. Netflix should remove the film from their stock. Reported previously. I'm going to repeat that. Ballinger's lawyer replied in an email that Vanity Fair's inquiries were simply a regurgitation of the baseless and unsubstantiated claims that other media outlets and individuals on social media have reported previously. You mean the ones that come with screenshots and videos? Okay. The reality of some of these claims, and in turn the broader narrative around Ballinger, remains murky. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm a sneezing fit, but um, two points on that. The attorney apparently also represented Prince Andrew and another, um, another high-profile... Um, person who had um like sexual allegation claims or some sort of thing going on and um and the thing is um what they're doing here is like so open like, like any parent who's reading this who knows anything about this story would be absolutely horrified that she's you know attacking her victims ow Again, the evidence is there. Various allegations remain unverified. Like, which ones? Could you be more specific? Because most of them come with receipts. Left to endlessly circulate as they fall under that ever-expanding umbrella of inappropriate behavior. Wow. In a sense, this is a familiar story for the social media age. But Ballinger's downfall is unique. She brought teens into an, an adult world and made it feel like it was theirs. Then saw those fans turn against her. Are you fucking... Yeah, seriously. You brought teens into an adult world? That's your business, baby? You brought teens into an adult world. What the hell kind of statement is that? What... Uh, how do you justify setting up chat rooms for these kids sharing inappropriate comments conversation pictures and you think that it's okay for you to bring teens into an adult world you think it's okay for you to do that oh my god joking Ew. What oh, the fuck? Right. She brought teens into an adult world. Problem number one. That's problem number one. Do you not? It's in your own writing. Do you fucking see this? Anthony made it feel like it was theirs, then saw those fans turn against her. So she's the victim now, is she? 
She made the irresponsible choice as a full-grown adult to bring literal children into absolutely inappropriate and dangerous circumstances. Can we please go back to the time that she abandoned Adam? What, hold up. Hold up. You also have to see the way that she's reacting to Adam is as though she actually did have some sort of romantic interest in him. I, allegedly, okay? Because you don't generally treat a child this way. And she's attacking him in such a way as though he's like a former lover, which I don't think that ever happened, right? But the dynamics of their friendship, in air quotes, um, is very disturbing. The fact that she's attacking this guy, he's 20 now, right? But at the time that all this happened, he was a child. It was between ages 13 and 17. McIntyre in Dublin, a city of which he was unfamiliar by himself as a child. Okay. It's the product of a particular era of YouTube stardom of a digital person able to cultivate a feverish and savvy fandom that's been trained to reverse course and maybe seek payback with the first spilling of tea. <sighs> You could be forgiven if you were one of the millions who back in the summer of 2020 allayed i've never heard that word before i i assume i'm i infer that that's sort of a, a synonym for like uh alleviated some covid anxiety by diving into the youtube drama unfolding between ballinger and her former fan adam mcintyre a then 17 year old from brighton england actually he was from ireland originally and I believe at this time. Right. Um, good research, though. Ballinger was his was his idol. Her merch could be seen all over his bedroom, where he recorded his own videos. He was an aspiring influencer himself, making sweet, low-stakes YouTube content about his life. On June twenty second, McIntyre posted a video to his channel titled "Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying." Was that in June? I thought it was in April. I'm gonna be nitpicky because. Um, huh. I'm going to be nitpicky. <laughs> On June 22nd, McIntyre posted a video to his channel titled Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying. This video was actually posted on April 28th, 2020. So it's at this juncture, even though you've already like started making thinly veiled uh, excuses for or uh, exceptions for Colleen, um, your absolute inaccuracy with just basic information tells me that you're not a, a reliable journalist and yeah sorry it do be like that sometimes <sighs> that being said let's move on i guess well i mean it's entirely possible and you know this is just an observation an opinion that he didn't even write this that they wrote it and he just like did some minor editing but it cl it's clear he didn't do any fact checking whatsoever. In it, McIntyre told several seemingly unrelated stories. How are they unrelated? They're all absolutely related. He's explaining the end of his relationship essentially with Colleen Bellinger and how that happened, as well as how he was reflecting on it being inappropriate that she sent him fucking lingerie. Unrelated. Dumbass. One recounted the time Ballinger sent him lingerie. Okay. <laughs> One recounted the time Ballinger sent him lingerie in the mail to his mother's horror. Uh, yeah. yeah. The lingerie was new and unworn, and Ballinger has since apologized for sending it. Oh, sorry, I sent you underwear, child. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, she should have also apologized for actually doing a live stream showing her lingerie purchases to children who watch her channel. Like, why isn't anybody talking about this? The fact that she even did the live stream in the first place is problematic. But then she goes even further, sends the lingerie to a 13 year old, and also says on live stream, oh, his parents are probably going to be mad. Yeah. They will be mad. How disgusting. Oh my God, can you imagine if you like hired a babysitter that was this inappropriate? 
and you found out about it later, like, you'd be fucking horrified, right? That, oh my god, I left my child in the, the custody of this person. And Adam's parents were trusting that, well, she's a celebrity, she's probably fine, right? Like, it's not that big of a deal. And, and she keeps, like, um, going over these boundaries of what you can do with children. Um, first of all, she shouldn't have been in contact with him at all. You don't have that kind of direct contact unless you just have like a fan club that's like, hey, watch my next video, blah, blah, blah. You don't try and like form direct relationships like that with your fan base, especially, I mean, oh my God, how dumb is this woman? That's all better. Another was intended to debunk the rumor that he was secretly behind some anti-Miranda Singh social media accounts that Ballinger had gotten wind of, okay? I also think that that is relevant to, to the situation at hand. Context, Anthony. A third concerned the fallout of a tweet that Ballinger allowed McIntyre to post as Miranda Sings from the character's Twitter account that led him to n him never posting on her behalf again. Okay, again, relevant. All relevant. He'd been considered her social media intern, he said, with the hopes of being employed by her one day in that capacity. No, pro with essentially the promise of being employed by her. The intention to employ him. I should say. Ballinger says he only had access to her account for one day and that if all went well, she had planned to hire him formally. Yes, that's that's what I said. Uh-huh. Okay. The tweet in question was seized upon as queer baiting by Miranda's fandom. She came out as a Megan Trainer fan and led to intense backlash. It might sound strange to hear that Ballinger had put a fan in charge of her character's Twitter to begin with, but that access went in line with her public image. It's still weird. No, 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 Colleen. That's child labor. For free, right? Child labor for free. And on top of it, like, what kind of operation do you have running if you've got your fan base running your social media presence? Like, how professional is that bullshit? What kind of operation do you got going on here? This is, this is some bullshit. I would never let a kid create content on my behalf. Ballinger was closely aligned with her most devoted young viewers. Okay? Mm -hmm. For her to remove that access as McIntyre experienced felt painful. McIntyre felt that Ballinger was guilting him, selfishly preoccupied with her reputation rather than his feelings. Yeah. Accurate. After the backlash, she apologized for the tweet. Later, oh she denied God. ever blaming McIntyre and said she should have reviewed his tweets more carefully. Yeah, and in his video, he gives the receipts, the proof, the video, the fucking screenshots that prove that not once, not twice, but multiple times, Colleen saw the tweet, asked for clarification on the tweet, and then said, go crazy. Literally gave him the password then to say, hey, fucking tweet that. Mm -hmm. yeah. she, didn't, she didn't post it herself. She had him do it. So technically, he tweeted it for her. Woo! My research is hard. Then came the YouTube response to McIntyre's YouTube accusation. That's a lot of using YouTube in one half of a sentence. A classic back and forth. If the names James Charles and Tati Westbrook mean anything to you, you get the idea. And if they don't, what if I'm someone that that doesn't do anything for? An article should be written. So what is this guy thinking? He was a child. She was the adult in this situation. She can't constantly be blaming the kid for the instructions she gave him. Show, send me a picture of your ass, Adam. Right? That's what she wanted. Right? Uh, run my social media account for me, Adam. Right? She was the adult in this scenario. You can't be like, this is on equal footing. And this is why I'm saying that when you look at this, she's treating this as though it's an, Adam is her, like her ex-boyfriend. Because that's not an appropriate way to look at the dispute at all. Like he's saying, hey, I feel like I was uh, misused. I was exploited. I was groomed. I was, you know put in, in scenarios where 
I thought she really valued and appreciated me because she was talking about uh, very personal things such as her divorce and trying to get me to do research on um, her and um, her ex-husband on various sites. She should have, why was she doing this? Why did she have direct contact with this kid? And how can she possibly treat this as a scenario like she's, um, like, like it was equal footing? It was not equal footing. She was an adult and she was a celebrity. There was a huge power dynamic to this. And he was a kid. He was a fan. Can you imagine, like, think of, all, like, the, your own youth, like, I'm 49, right? So when I was a kid, I was really into U2. And if Bono had like approached me and wanted to have like one-on-ones, I'd be all over that. And does it look like I'm a stalker because I had U2 posters on my walls? That's what fans do. They put swag all over their room because I mean you're my celebrity I, I I love you I love your songs I love what you're doing blah 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 right so Adam was a fan and she totally took advantage of him and now she's treating him in this Vanity Fair article in the ukulele song she is treating him like an ex-lover which makes this even more complicated that anybody with any knowledge of a situation or no knowledge of a situation should be able to read it and understand. Ballinger 33 at the time of her response to a teenager posted a classic apology vlog. She revealed screenshots of Instagram DMs she'd sent to McIntyre and one that McIntyre's mother sent, had, had purportedly sent to her, which seemed to be Ballinger's way of assuring viewers of what really happened, a strategy not unlike McIntyre's. Yeah, but this strategy came with millions of devoted young followers who then proceeded to make Adam's life a living hell for years. If he's not going to give you the context and the full breadth of the situation, I will. <laughs> Anthony. In a DM, she accuses him of going too far, supposedly in response to him asking her to imagine her newborn son being taken advantage of in the same way he felt he had been. She also elaborated upon the, the lingerie ac accident. <laughs> There's been a horrible lingerie accident. Oh, yes, <laughs> she also yeah. elaborated upon the lingerie incident. During a live stream giveaway with her fans, Ballinger explained McIntyre had asked for the article of clothing. According to her, he'd even send photos of himself jokingly posing in the underwear to group chat. He was 13. And she was in her 30s. She shouldn't have been displaying lingerie on a live stream at all. And she most certainly shouldn't have shipped it cross country, in, in, intercontinental, you guys, um, to wherever it is that he lives in the UK. I think it's like Ireland or something, right? Um, she actually paid all the postage to send lingerie to a 13 year old. That's, that included Ballinger and her most noted fans. First of all, I don't care how many times a child asks for lingerie from you, you don't give it to him, okay? That's called just being being the grown-up in the situation who knows the level of appropriateness. Second of all, Adam was not begging for the fucking lingerie. As we have proved time and time again, Colleen conveniently left out the part where she suggests, do you want the rhyme panties? And then Corey continues to suggest it as well. And then Corey, according to Adam, asked that Adam send pictures in the lingerie over his clothes. Okay. Which she then uses against him as though, well, he was asking for it. He was 13, Colleen. And you guys were exploiting him. You knew he was a super fan. And you're like, hey, like, put the lingerie on and um, show us some pictures. Again, soliciting pictures from a minor.
things that grown-ups absolutely do. Ballinger painted a seemingly accurate portrait of the Miranda Sings community, a silly place for kids like McIntyre to belong, looking up to an increasingly famous and powerful public figure. I'm not a monster, I'm not a groomer, and I do not deserve to die, Ballinger said in the video, alluding to the possibility that she'd received death threats. Right, because we can't get through an apology video without um, making ourselves the victim of something that potentially happened. Public opinion, or at least... Darvo. YouTube fandom swayed back toward Ballinger, though the pendulum would swing back and forth for years. McIntyre established a new YouTube identity as Ballinger's whistleblower, frequently posting new videos and racking up hundreds of thousands of views by commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move. Um, that is a weird way to characterize it, um, because Adam McIntyre did not consistently make videos about Colleen Ballinger. If I recall, he made a couple right before she ended up getting exposed by Cody Tyler. Uh, I would not say that he was commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move. The fuck are you talking about? This paints... I don't care if he fucking live streams about this every goddamn day, Colleen. You fucking abused him. He's obviously been traumatized by it. And you're doing absolutely nothing to rectify the situation other than try and cover your own goddamn ass. Adam, like, he's some fucking insane stalker. What the fuck is this? Anthony. Meanwhile, Ballinger continued to work on a YouTube channel that was far from her Miranda Singh satire, Colleen Vlogs. Colleen Vlogs offered a wholesome lifestyle content. Offer. <sighs> Listen, I did the James Charles one before this. I can't read anymore, okay? Colleen Vlogs offered wholesome lifestyle content about her kids. McIntyre appeared to seize on this, accusing Ballinger's brother's family, the Ballinger family, who have a family-oriented channel, say family again, of endangering and exploiting their children online. Exploit- Yeah, seriously, like, she's monetizing her own kids. She obviously has no fucking respect whatsoever for children. Not even her own. Allegedly their children out that's it's not exploiting it's exploiting that's what they do they use their children for clicks and views which in turn gets them money that's exploiting that's that's how you exploit someone i use you so people click on video when people click on video yeah seriously like sag aftra even has like child protective laws in place for child actors are you setting up accounts for these kids that they are getting royalties from these fucking streams that you're doing to exploit them? What the hell? Allegedly. Yo, I receive money. That's exploitation. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't think I would have to define that for you. McIntyre appeared to seize on this. The fact that Colleen had a vlog channel. Col the fact that Colleen was exploiting her children. And the fact that her brother Christopher and his wife Jessica exploit their children. Those are two totally separate things. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Ballinger family as if they are like some small, teeny tiny YouTube channel. Instead of like a huge, like essential, essentially like YouTube conglomerate that has been exploiting all 15 of their fucking children for years. Mm -mm, no. No, what we're not going to do is make Adam seem like he's some fucking stalker who is an opportunist taking every opportunity to take pot shots at Colleen Ballinger, who, again, was a fucking adult who took advantage of a child yep. for years. And not just one child, several children. I'd like to remind you that there are now several people who were children at the time who have come out to speak on Colleen. Okay, this is so gross. Yeah, because this was entirely directed at Adam as a hit piece, and um, he is the target here. And it's very, um, it's wild to watch a 30-something-year-old woman um, treating this young man who was a child at the time that they were actually friends um, as though he's an ex-lover, because that's how it's coming across, Colleen. That's how it's coming across, is that you're attacking an ex-lover. That's what it sounds like. I know that both of you claim that there was no actual physical intercation or, or interactions here. But um, the fact is, you are. it's like you had a mental 
relationship with him, a mental romance, and you initiated it, you propagated it, and you are punishing him now. Anyway, let's continue, I guess. How creepy that I feel I watched them grow up, he said. It's disgusting. His critique gave way to a denunciation of family channels more broadly. You know, people have been denouncing family channels on their own terms for quite some time. Child exploitation is very common on YouTube. It's very common in Hollywood. It's very common in the world. Children are often not treated as people. For years, this drama was very insular, and it probably should have stayed that way. Should it? Mm. First of all, calling it drama? Gross. Second of all, it should have stayed insular? It should have stayed quiet? Are you fucking kidding me? Are, are you fucking joke? Do you care about kids at all? No, she doesn't want her On June 7th, McIntyre posted an anti-Ballinger video, as he does every so often. Oh, I'm sorry. He does that every so often. I'm sorry. I thought he had... What was it? It was commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move so which is it is it an occasional video or is it commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move you can't have it both ways it, <laughs> calling it an anti-ballinger video is so such a mischaracterization first of all the reason that adam put that video up was because cody fucking tyler posted a video exposing her time and why she left the Colleen Ballinger fandom. Cody exposed Colleen. They exposed all the screenshots, all the videos, all the evidence. Cody Tyler put that out there. Cody Tyler took Adam McIntyre's trauma, his story, everything that he did keep insular and exposed it. So Adam McIntyre had the right to speak on it because it happened to him. Nothing happened to Cody Tyler, by the way. Nothing happened to them. They were part of this in many inappropriate ways. Were they perhaps manipulated, maybe? I don't know, I don't really care. Their story is not the story, but their story opened up a huge floodgate for Adam which then opened up a huge floodgate for a bunch of other victims who then felt safe to come forward, safer to come forward. It was not an anti-Colleen video. It was not, oh, I'm sorry, an anti-Ballinger video. Wow, this is garbage. If you have not been fired by Vanity Fair yet, Anthony, you should be. This is garbage journalism. <sighs> this one was titled My Relationship with Colleen Ballinger. He had new details, he claimed, describing staying up with her back when they were close and listening to her talk about her divorce. No, listening to her trauma dump about her divorce, yeah. about her abusive husband, about their sex life, about his penis. According to McIntyre, she embroiled him oh in a hateful God. campaign against her ex-husband. Then he came to a realization that shocked YouTube. This woman used me. This woman groomed me. The line set in motion yet another stream of blowback against Ballinger, but this time the word grooming captured the attention of mainstream, mainstream press as well. Actually, it took a really long time for the mainstream press to catch up, which is something that we continue to note was how few people were talking about it. Good research, though. The substance of Ballinger's alleged grooming has not gone beyond what McIntyre has described in his videos or what a few other fans allege thereafter. So, okay, we're about to, I'm assuming, we're about to imply that because uh, there was no intense, uh, because there was no sexual intention that this was not grooming. I bet that's where we're going. I bet we're going to pop a gut at the fuck up, huh? It has not been interrogated by media outlets reporting on the controversy either. HuffPost published allegations of grooming flexibly employ the term in a fashion not unlike how it's weaponized in right-wing circles against LGBTQ plus people. That is so fucking offensive that she would try and compare her situation of several children coming forward with allegations to the right wing making up shit about the transgender community. That totally, um, it, it, it completely disrespects the fight that transgender activists and, and people in general that are transgender are facing right now with all of these laws that they're trying to pass and, and these lies that they're making up about them. 
Colleen has several actual accusers. That's not the goddamn same thing as Drag Queen Story Hour. It's not the same thing as being able to use the appropriate bathroom. She's so, I mean, I, I, I can't, she's got to be like so self-centered and narcissistic to try and put her particular Me Too claims up in comparison to an entire marginalized community of people who are being attacked by the right wing. I'm sorry, sweetheart. You are not a representative of the left. And don't speak for the left, ever. Wow, what a misfire. What a misfire there. The described behavior does not approach the sexual exploitation or abuse that the actual definition of grooming indicates. As predicted, yes. Th wow. Applying that to the way that right-wing conservatives, staunch conservatives, bigots, refer to LGBTQ plus people as groomers. What a misfire. LGBTQ plus people are referred to as groomers by staunch right-wing bigots. Out of sheer hate and ignorance. Grooming is not always sexual. There is not always sexual intent in grooming. Okay? Trying to make these two ideas the same, not even close. A bigot making up accusations about an entire group of people for simply existing is not the same as a grown woman using young children for free labor promises of friendship as sounding board for all their incredibly inappropriate situations that she was involved in i can't even I, <laughs> Among other things, of course, but like I can't fathom how. I mean, the only way you could actually make those two things align in your brain is if you did no research, and it's very clear. What are film critics saying about that you did little to no research? The perception of Ballinger as a groomer nonetheless snowballed. If everything that adds up in every screenshot that has been shown by Adam McIntyre specifically. And only, even if we only use Adam's evidence, that adds up to grooming. Ballinger eventually decided to, what else, post another video on YouTube after a month, almost, just FYI. She took out her ukulele to awkwardly sing through her defense, implying the internet seized upon allegations that she's a groomer for entertainment. She said she wanted her fans to be her friends, admitting that desire was wrong. I'm not a groomer, she sang, just a loser. The apology was roundly mocked, especially on YouTube where parodies have already gotten millions of views, and rightly so. Soon an old video of Miranda Sings performing single ladies in dark green makeup was unearthed by former fans to find it. Okay, actually it was unearthed by Paige Christie, who found it. Paige Christie unearthed that. She's a, a creator, Anthony? A big creator on YouTube. Um, she unearthed it when she went through Colleen Ballinger's books the the ones her miranda sings books the ones she wrote herself there was a qr code to this video in that book no one unearthed shit colleen put it out there published it and made money off of it okay there you go i did your research for you honey to find it you needed to have a copy of her book with a qr code linking to it okay okay touche touche you, you got there Okay, uh, former fans, though, still incorrect. <clears throat> Who said it looked like she performed in blackface? Her lawyer sent out a statement explaining the use of the makeup. Headlines were changed, though corrections were not issued. Because, honestly, um, it, it's like, oh, look, it's a whole, it's a vat of pig shit. Uh, but one cow took a shit in it. Could you scoop out the cow shit for me? Like, who gives a fuck? 
It's too close for comfort anyway. Why are you performing single ladies with any dark paint on your face, you dumb bitch? McIntyre and another former fan have also alleged that Ballinger sent them nude photos from a sex worker. Um, a sex worker. <clears throat> Trisha Paytas. I know that she's also a well-known creator on this app, one of the biggest. Uh, has been around for the longest, uh, despite many years of controversies and, and horrible behavior. Uh, most people know who Trisha Paytas is. Although we were supposed to put the the uh, James Charles and Tati Westbrook thing together for ourselves, so... Posting unverified if troubling text messages as proof. No. Literally posting the fact that she sent pornographic photos of Trisha Paytas by a text. Racially insensitive comic performances she performed as Miranda Sings and as Colleen Ballinger. Thanks. That... But also, those... Pictures were behind a paywall, and they were rated as as porn. They were behind a paywall, so there is no reason she should have been downloading those photos and sending them. I mean, like first of all, just the act of sending them to uh, minors is illegal, but um, but also taking that content that's behind pay pay only or um, fans only. Um, and then using it, this is her friend, and she is, is fat shaming her with young boys. Ballinger later apologized for have roared back on social media. Yeah, there's been a bunch of new ones that resurfaced too, though. You know, all of this is being filtered into the current YouTube content machine, wrongdoing exposed with a relentlessness that could rival the anti Amber Heard brigade. After Ballinger posted her ukulele video, that's a sentence. McIntyre posted a reaction on Twitch. He was incredulous that Ballinger hadn't apologized to him in private. A reminder, perhaps, that their relationship had reached a turning point years earlier when he sent out a tweet that their relationship... Wait, no. <laughs> when he sent out a tweet that briefly got Miranda Sings canceled. The fuck does that have to do with it? He well, also, look at the wording. Why does he keep calling it a relationship rather than a friendship? Like I said, she is treating this like an ex boyfriend situation it's very bizarre and the amber heard comparison is also very bizarre because yeah that's a super contentious divorce they were domestically violent with each other and um she ultimately cut off the tip of johnny depp's finger so do you feel like the criticism was unnecessary there give me a break it's incredulous that Ballinger hadn't apologized to him in private because he said, hey, if you just shoot me an apology in private, my mother an apology in private, and make a public apology, I'll let it go. We'll move on. A reminder, perhaps, that their relationship had reached a turning point years earlier when he sent out a tweet that briefly got Miranda Sings canceled. What the fuck is that? A Why is that a reminder that they were close? Can you just say that? I don't I don't get it. Right. Back then, a teenage McIntyre perhaps hoped for sympathy, another chance, a way back into the Ballinger fold. The internet is generally too cruel for that. Its judgment's too swift. But one can look at the de-evolution of the Miranda Sings empire and see that the longer it drags out, the harder it is to pin down the exact truth. No, that's not true. Justifiable outrage turns to silly memes and headlines and videos. The silly memes are around the childish, disgusting way that Colleen Ballinger, a grown adult in her late 30s, a a approached a situation that has very serious allegations attached to it. Like, I, what are you talking about? The internet is going to meme whatever the internet is going to meme. If you pull out a fucking ukulele when you've been accused of child grooming, the you deserve to have the internet meme you. Sorry. If there's one thing the saga of Colleen Ballinger and her fans has taught us, it's that today's YouTube winner is tomorrow's loser. No. <laughs> That's not what it's taught us. What it's taught us is that a lot of people have inappropriate relationships with children on the internet. That's what it's taught us. The people that you felt like you could trust, creators that you felt like you could trust, were actually treating fucking children like shit. And treating them like they're employees. And using them for information. And being generally terrible people. What do you mean it taught us that 
today's YouTube success is tomorrow's, you like, YouTube loser or whatever the fuck. Anthony, what the fuck are you on, my dude? Holy shit. And the fact that Vanity Fair has not gone back, issued a retraction and apology to Adam McIntyre specifically for this garbage-ass article and fired that dumbass Anthony is just absolutely appalling. This article was re fucking ridiculous. I don't... Um, this... Listen. 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 Mm. Stop it. Don't do that. BuzzFeed with Gabby Hanna, Cosmopolitan with James Charles, and now Vanity Fair with Colleen Ballinger. All three of these. It, it boggles my mind that, for whatever reason, the... the... people who have written these articles on something that involves, like, internet culture, things that happen on the internet where there are a multitude of receipts, where drama and commentary channels c bring it all forth. We all, I, that's, what, that's our job. That's what we do, right? We bring you the information with receipts, right? Most of the time. Most of us do. Because here it is. This is, this is, this is, this is the story. Here's what supports it. That's how it works. That's how you get information across to a vast number of people. How these journalists get it so wrong when it's all so fucking readily available is absolutely beyond me. I, this, this infuriated me on another level. I am so angry for Adam McIntyre and for all the other victims of the situation the only logical thing I can think of, and this is not me saying that this is a fact, um, I feel like money changed hands somewhere here. Similarly to TMZ, I feel, in my opinion, solely my opinion, there was some money changing hands here. I'll leave you with that. I'm going to let my voice rest. I don't care how many articles she gets her law team to try and write for her. This woman is done. Any actual parent who knows what's going on here is going to make sure that she d does not see the light of day in their houses. On line, on books, on Netflix, period.